And I want to welcome again Benjamin Anthony, the CEO of the Miriam Institute. Thank you very much for being with us. So uh, this report ended uh, with, with the, the, the possible rift within the Israeli government. The prime minister, sick or healthy, is in Israel. Uh, the war cabinet minister, Benny Gantz, is in Washington, meeting the vice president, meeting the, the, the secretary of state. So everybody's saying, at least the Americans are saying, no, we understand there's a prime minister. No one is, is snubbing him. But it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And quite frankly, I don't think Benny Gantz has any business traveling to the United States of America unless it's under the aegis and auspices of the Prime Minister of the States of Israel. There is only one Prime Minister. It's still Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, to your point, sick or healthy. And let's not forget that Benny Gantz is a political rival of the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Netanyahu, though, has in a way jammed himself somewhat because the natural emissary for him to send to the United States in a time of war would be the Defense Minister. It would be Yoav Gallant. But in light of the fact that Prime Minister Netanyahu never received an official invitation to the White House since his return to the premiership here under the Biden administration, he has held the position that nobody but he will travel there first. Now, given that Gallant is not permitted to travel there at this time. Gantz has gone unilaterally in Danso, but I think that his meetings have been largely ineffective. And Gallant, not perhaps currently not the favorite candidate when it comes to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah, certainly not the favorite candidate, especially as he effectively handed a veto power to Benny Gantz over the issue of whether or not to draft Haredim into the Israel Defense Forces. But I actually think that Yoav Gallant has performed very admirably throughout. I think that Yoav Gallant was correct if the rumor are true to insist on a strike against Hezbollah on October the 7th, even prior to us maneuvering inside the Gaza Strip. I think that was wise. He was overruled, but I agreed with his view on that. And I think that facts are bearing out the wisdom of that position. And I also think that Gallant has shown resolute determination to keep pushing this fight against Hamas inside the Gaza Strip. This is a rare contender that we're seeing in the theater of war here in Israel, which is an IDF in pursuit of victory. Now, latterly, Prime Minister Netanyahu has talked about total victory. But actually, that pursuit of victory, I think, is most closely informed by the push and the drive and the resoluteness of Yoav Gallant. That's my opinion on it. Uh, and, and now you have Gallant and Benjamin Netanyahu and, and the entire cabinet will we'll have to decide what's next. There might be a deal, there might not be a deal. We just spoke about the fact that there are uh, conflicting reports coming out of Cairo. Uh, if, if the date of, of uh, the, the beginning of Ramadan, which is this coming Sunday, as it seems, will probably not be met, what's next? Is it, is it still negotiating? Is it going to Rafah? Is it doing both at the same time? Where, where is Israel positioning itself? Yeah, so you and Ariel spoke correctly about the potency of Hamas's psychological warfare. And you're right to highlight that point, both of you, of course. But there's also real warfare, real military warfare that's taking place. And that is keeping the jackboot on the neck of Hamas, rightly so. In terms of what's going on with Rafah, look, if we're able to bring about a further hostage release, by way of a deal that takes place and even runs throughout the course of the month of Ramadan, then I think it would be sensible for us to start that process of releasing the hostages. I'm talking about the actual release, not the start of negotiations for it, actually seeing hostages come home. We should delay an incursion into Rafah under those circumstances. But if that is not the case prior to the start of Ramadan, I believe that the Israel Defense Forces should move in a determined fashion into Rafah, move into that final stronghold of Hamas down there in the south of the Gaza Strip. It's there that we believe many of our hostages are being held. It's there that we believe many of the higher ups of Hamas are taking shelter. And I don't think that we should defer to the sacred nature of the month of Ramadan when it comes to our sacred duty to bring our hostages back, to bring peace to our land, and to enable our citizens to move back to their homes in an atmosphere of safety and security in southern Israel and in northern Israel. So you speak of northern Israel. Uh, you speak. We mentioned Galant. You mentioned Hezbollah. Now we're hearing that, that Gallant speaking with, with Amos Ochstein, the American envoy, telling him that Israel is about to make a decision regarding the north. Is it time to push further in or not? What should Israel do? I mean, you go into a war with Hezbollah when you're still engaged with a war in Hamas, whatever that would mean for the fighting forces, for the home front, is this where Israel should head? So Benny Gantz is over there talking about that fact. It's largely reported that him expressing to the Americans that Israel intends to maneuver in southern Lebanon has not been met with great enthusiasm by his American counterparts or by the Americans to whom he's spoken, including the vice president, 
national security advisor. And yes, Hochstein, the, Israel, the American envoy, has said that he wants to see a diplomatic resolution to this issue between Israel and Hezbollah inside southern Lebanon. Everybody should remember there's already a diplomatic resolution that was put forward. It's called 1701. Resolu exactly, Resolution 1701. It's been ignored. This is a result of the limitations and of, of a diplomatic outcome. I think, and I've said this from the beginning, I said that I agree with Minister Gallant, who has also said this, who was a champion of going into southern Lebanon at the outset of this war, as early as October the 7th, 8th, 9th. I think that we're going to have to operate inside southern Lebanon. We're going to have to do that informed by the same ethos, that of pursuing a victory against an enemy. Because remember, all of the horrors that we saw on October the 7th will pale compared to what we see if we await an invasion into northern Israel by Hezbollah at a time of our enemies choosing. So there are certain things we should have learned since October 7th. There are, number one, our enemies are not deterred. Number two, we must choose when we launch a defensive operation against those enemies. And the third thing is, once launched, we must pursue that operation until a conclusive outcome that brings our civilians back to their homes. Again, in the north, 80,000 are refugees in their own country. Yeah. Many interesting considerations there. Benjamin Anthony, CEO of the Miram Institute, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.